hyperbole. An advice podcast where two brothers and Rand make exaggerated statements not meant to be taken literally. What was that, Stefan? Hyperbole. (laughs) Hello, everybody, and welcome to an extra special episode of Hyperbole Podcast. My name is Stefan, and I am your main host. Uh, Anthony and Rand, my other co-hosts, are not here today. Uh, I, I wanted an upgrade, and uh, so I, I ended up going for it. So instead of them, I have a very special guest for you guys today, Jesse May Paluzzo. Everybody give a virtual round of applause. I can hear it resonating. <laughs> awesome. Jesse May, has she's a comedian, an actress, an all-around entertainer. She's appeared on MTV's Girl Code and Safe Word, NBC's Last Call with Carson Daly. She was a guest on the Joe Rogan Experience podcast. E's Chelsea Lately, VH1's Hip Hop Squares, True TV's Comedy Knockout, and multiple appearances on Comedy Central's late night great panel show At Midnight, which I love. And... If you're thinking, wow, she's done a lot already, she's doing more. She hosts the Sharp Tum podcast, found everywhere, just like God, you can find her everywhere. And uh, my favorite, I have to say, segment right now is Carpe DMs. It's it's <laughs> <laughs> it's very good, and I am also very sad that you get all those types of DMs. So <laughs> bless you. <laughs> and other than that she's also finishing up her tour and will be in phoenix november 14th through the 17th at the house of comedy i'm gonna put a link in the show notes for tickets so you go and buy them and go see her i will be there friday night chortling and guffawing at you <laughs> welcome jesse may how are i'm you? in sweatpants <laughs> <laughs> All those, ama- the, all those amazing introductions, and I'm I'm in sweatpants. <laughs> You're and humble on top of everything. She's humble. I'm so humble. I have never been. I'm a big old slice of humble pie right now. I, I told you I spent all day at the DMV. The DMV don't give a fuck who you are. Oh my god, they do not care. Three hours. Yeah, but I got my license. I I, I answered like nine questions wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, how many questions were there? <laughs> Like 36, and I'm like, I definitely didn't pass ass, didn't pass oh. this at all. And at the end, they were like, you pass. I'm like, what? Oh, my God. Is how that all? I, how are they allowing me to drive? Is that all you need to do to renew your license in LA, in California? Yeah, you just have to take a test that <laughs> you don't really even really need to pass. Nice. In, and, then, uh, and the funny thing is I had, I was just sitting there waiting, and I had one of my friends uh, well a a company deliver me weed (laughs) (laughs) ah i need to move to california i had Uh, a bag of weed handed off to me that's pretty was that uber weed uber weeds no it was this company that hit me up on instagram was like hey you want to try our stuff i'm like sure i'm at the dmv do you make deliveries they're like absolutely that is pretty amazing right i probably should give them a shout out i don't even know let's see the name of the company shout them out they put it in a cute little cupcake bag the name of the company is Cannabis, so shout out to Cannabis. Oh, I love weed puns. I love puns in general. Ah, Cannabis. That's it. A good pun just can make your day. Just elevates you, just like weed. <laughs> it's beautiful. It is. <laughs> that's that's amazing. Well, thank you so much for joining. Is there anything that I missed that you would like to add? To- um, you. I mean, you hit all of it. What else is there? I yeah I'm on I'm on the road I'll be in Arizona you got that house of comedy woo 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 come through <laughs> escape all of those cactus that shoot needles at you that you have there in oh, Phoenix man. Arizona people are not meant to live in the fucking desert it the is desert's trying to murder you every day it is terrifying in it's here it's so terrifying the creatures in the desert are terrifying oh, terrifying the fact that they can survive in those adverse weather conditions is just it's unnatural <laughs> I, I, you're, you're right i don't i don't think this place is gonna be inhabitable in 10 15 years because it's just i don't think i think we're gonna rough. completely burn up and rightfully so the dinosaurs will come back and live in harmony so the dinosaurs will replace the arizonians and just yes. arizona will be dinosaur land stoner predictions St- <laughs> a new segment on my podcast <laughs> <laughs> oh i love it everybody also <laughs> carries around a, it's like a survival tactic everybody carries around some huge water bottle i yeah, actually oh, yeah. right here stay hydrated i have that <laughs> i got my yeti 
Oh man, I'm ready for my Yeti. Nice. You're you're good for Arizona. <laughs> Have you been to Arizona before? Oh yeah, I've been there a bunch of times. Oh nice. Yeah, I've been uh, to Ari- uh, Phoenix, Scottsdale, Tempe. Nice. Visited Stanhope and Bisbee. Um, Whoa. Okay. I've been all over. Yeah, I've been all over. Wow. I'll probably go back and see that crazy clown when I'm back through that way next Not, week. Do you like ghosts? I love ghosts. Ghosts or goats? Uh, well, ghosts. Cause I, I like ghosts and goats. I, I someone should do ghost yoga. I. I <laughs> 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 oh can my you imagine God. that would be pretty amazing you're doing yoga I mean, and then just a ghost comes up behind you and whispers yeah. in your ear oh. the yoga farts are already bad but add an add in a ghost and you're gonna have yoga shits oh so scared <laughs> so if why you, you like, ask me about ghosts uh so there is a ghost town in arizona it's called jerome and it's way at the tippy top of a mountain and it used to be an old mining town but then in the 1917 ish time frame they ran out of copper and then they all abandoned it so it's a ghost town and so it's all haunted and there are ghosts there so i haven't seen one it's a literal ghost town and there's ghosts there there are ghosts yes how do you know there are also goat ghosts because they're (laughs) they're louder than the regular ghosts so you can barely hear the regular ones but then (laughs) (laughs) so there are goat ghosts Oh, it's the worst. It's it's a little annoying, actually. Don't go oh there. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'd be uh, scared of a goat ghost because it would just, like, hit you in the knees all day. Oh, my God. And then eat all your food, too. Yeah. That'd be And terrible. then, like, be, like, little goat shit pellets left around the carpet. Oh, Imagine their no. poops look like little Hershey kisses. And then you can't get them out of the carpet because that ectoplasm just sticks. So yeah, the ectoplasm makes poop oh. stick. Everyone knows that science. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. So... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so if you like ghosts and goat ghosts, then go to Jerome. It's a cool. I might have to check town. out Jerome, man. And, I like to be scared. And there's a lot of cool art, and it's a real nice hippie vibe. So I is I, the art painted by ghosts? It is. It's all ghost art. No one's really like. I mean, it's so hard to tell. Like when you go on YouTube, I literally will look up ghost sightings on YouTube because I'm uh-huh. such a nerd. Uh huh. It's hard to tell now because everyone's got. The capability of making a really good fake video. It's hard to tell which is legit. It's no fun anymore. Remember like Blair Witch era where that movie scared the hell out of us because that technology was so groundbreaking for that style of cinematography. Now we're just like, meh. Yeah. Do it all. It's true. Although, you know, there's a haunted house now that's so terrifying. They personalize it to all of your deepest fears. Sounds so, like my butthole. And oh, <laughs> I think that's what it's called, my butthole. <laughs> <laughs> my butthole's a haunted house. <laughs> Just a house of horrors. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so let's dive into it. We're going to center ourselves with a nice quote, so we're ready to give some advice. This quote of the week is from Inspirabot. So an InspireBot is an AI-driven machine meant to squeeze life's lemons for us by making inspirational quotes and just spraying us with acidic wisdom. Since AI is the future, we need to get used to listening to robots. All hail InspireBot. So this week's quote is, art can often be fattening. Art can be fattening? Art can be fattening. Well, in what way? Like, if you're doing, like, some sort of interactive art installation where you're just eating cheeseburgers maybe it's because i don't know if they're talking about the spectator or the sculptor or artist but if you're if you're looking at art and appreciating it you're just kind of standing there and sitting there so maybe you're not burning any calories so you're yeah just... if you're just if you're just standing there eating and looking at paintings mm-hmm. that sounds like a great day throw in some marijuana and i'm there that art sounds... can be fattening did a did a robot write this? A robot generated this no quote. No fucking. I mean, obviously, art can be fattening. <laughs> it's like it sounds like something that a a toddler who got into his mom's day tequila would say. That's yeah. I actually it wrote sounds the like quote. like a to- a drunk toddler. Or yeah, or a really high toddler. That's what high to say. art can be fattening. Really, Chad. W- watch out! Art can be really. Watch out! Art can be fat. This is like a big warning. Watch out, all you artists. It can be it's fat. Gonna, you're going to get fat. Hey, Banksy, <laughs> move over, buddy. Get on the treadmill, you fat fuck. <laughs> so maybe you can get a treadmill while you're sculpting. 
So that yeah, way you can. Or they should put treadmills in front of paintings. Oh, that's pretty good. So at a Planet Fitness, instead of TV, you can just put a, a Mona Lisa, and then so you Absolutely. can admire it while you're walking. Yeah. That's pretty good. I think we're solving all of America's problems. I'm I'm pretty sure we are. This is great. Because we're I think we're winning the race in obesity in the world, aren't we? Yes. With besides like a handful of those really enormous Asian children. There are enormous Asian children? Yeah, there's a few enormous Asian children that like smoke cigarettes oh, in like Phuket I've, and like Thailand and Bangkok. <laughs> I've seen that. I've seen they're that. They're these like little toddlers, they look like they're about fifty. Oh my god. Like they're going on their second divorce, smoking a <laughs> I've seen some shit, man. Some goat yeah, ghosts. And... You don't see Angelina snatching those ones up. She'll get oh, some cute kids. She's looking through. Uh, I don't think that one's good. She's like, I don't want that obese, chain-smoking Thailand girl. I want the really, really cute. I want, <laughs> <laughs> I want, I want the... a toddler that isn't <laughs> addicted to cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So We're going to give bad advice. We are. I'm excited. The worst, the worst advice. All right. My favorite. So I feel like we cracked the code on that quote from that robot. I so think we're, we did. We're going to move into the main part of the podcast, and we've called it The Beef. So this is the meaty part of the podcast where we answer questions from fans or ones that we find from across the internet. <clears throat> Question one, I'm going to read it. It's brought to us by our fan, Shirley. She says, my older brother is trying to dominate our household, and he's tearing it apart whilst doing so. I'm 18, and I live with my mom. Oh, she's English. Should I do an English accent? Yeah, absolutely. All right, I'm going to do my best here. And a fem- feminine one. Oh, okay. I'm 18, and I live with my mom, my dad, and, it- <laughs> and a cock of an and older Mike brother. Here? <laughs> <laughs> I'm 18. I'm 18, and I live with my mom, my dad, and a cock of an older brother. He has the biggest attitude problem that you could imagine. It's that basic... The world owes me everything complex. He's the... I'm going in and out of British. I know you it's are. A, it's it's like a thing. For people, it's like multiple oh. personality disorder. Maybe there's a British ghost inside of me. <laughs> he, he's the most disrespectful person I've ever met. He steals off my mum, even though she still gives him an allowance. He doesn't have a job and makes fun of me when I leave, when I have to leave for work. Now, you'd think my parents would kick him out, but they don't want to do that because they'd feel guilty about him having nowhere to go. So, what should I do? And that's, How old is he? Didn't say. She didn't say. Did, is he older or younger? Did she say that? Mm, so she's 18. Uh, oh, cock of an older brother. So older. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, he's older doing all that? Oh, oh yeah. That's the parents' fault, man. That's, the parents did that. The parents raised that little entitled asshole. But, mm-hmm. you know, two sides of every story. We don't really know what's going on with this chick, but if she is telling the truth, I would blame the parents, man. That's they a good. They didn't provide enough boundaries for this little bastard. Change the locks. Oh, that's good. So he has to, he has to try and Tough find luck. his way inside. Put, him, put his, put his ass out in the street. I like. He's that. a white British dude. He'll be fine. Yeah. Plus, England doesn't have any crime, does it? They don't have. No, I mean, they've got batons at worst. They got people steal horseshoes and wagon wheels. I think. That's the that's the biggest of their problems. I think people still tay and biscuits. <laughs> I would I would kick his ass out if I was I, if I was the mom. I'd be like, bye, bye, boy. Figure your life out, you little fucker. Got it. So tell them, tell the parents, it's your fault. Deal with it, and then yeah, change the locks. Change the locks. I like it. What if you made him do a lot of drugs, like mushrooms? Cause don't he might, he might be able to see the truth through psychedelics, right? Because having a lot of people, they've done it, and they're like, I've looked at life differently. So if you give him some drugs, well, you'd have to coax him into it or get him. Or you into just it. put it in a sandwich. Be like, here, you want a sandwich? It's got some extra mushrooms in there. You want and a like, psilocybin sandwich, do you? You want some fish chips and mushrooms. You want some fish, chips, and some magical mushrooms that'll make you go through the other side and have a new perspective. It's bonkers, mate. Bonkers. Uh, <laughs> Change the locks and put him on psilocybin. So both. Do the combo. Yeah. Lock him out so he's outside Tough on mushrooms. And mushrooms. I think that's the perfect concoction <laughs> for a better brother. Yeah. It's I a lo- recipe for a better brother. 
Okay, I think that's good. I think we kind of nailed it. Do you have anything else you want to add to that? Is he single? Because I'll, I'll fuck the crazy out of him. <laughs> I'll offer a one-time sex service. <laughs> so so he just needs to get, uh, what's the word he in English? He needs a good boning. He needs a good, no, it's not a snog, a shag. He needs a good shag. shag. Yeah, he won't, he d- it say he wants a shag. <laughs> what's a good bloody shag? Oh, I'll that's... shag him, like, looking like Robin Williams from... <laughs> Mrs. Doubtfire, I'll put a pie <laughs> in my face. Hello! <laughs> Hello, pulpit. Okay, so kick him outside, change the locks, mushrooms, and maybe a shag. Yeah, okay. I think that seems really legit. I think that's the perfect recipe for a better brother. I do too. Lovely. Okay, that's good. I think we're going to move on. This next segment is called Biz Whizzes. So we want to help business owners. So we've created a segment called Biz Whizzes, where we take a one-star review that whizzes on these bizzes and give advice to the biz on how to clean that whiz. <laughs> so, es- so essentially, we look at some one-star reviews for business and we give them advice for how to make their business better. Now, this week, it's Buffalo Wild Wings in Tempe, Arizona. Have oh, you- Jesus. I already know how to make that better. Wash your hands. <laughs> Just blow it up and start over. Wash your hands. <laughs> Burn it to the ground. So Nick Nikila drops a spicy one-star review on Yelp that says, this location has the worst food in the world. It, <laughs> it tastes as if there are ground up cockroaches in the wings. I would avoid if you do not want food poisoning. And that's it. That just sounds like the most generic yelp review ever also how do you know what ground up cockroaches taste like i was just about to ask that too i feel like you would have had to taste ground up cockroaches too i'm not gonna trust the opinion of someone who's eating ground up cockroaches Mm -mm. and and your culinary uh (laughs) culinary (laughs) expertise expands to buffalo wild wing <laughs> somebody that's ventured out and gone and tasted co- ground up cockroaches and then they go to yeah. a buffalo wild wings and leave a review maybe their <laughs> maybe their palate isn't for the target audience of a buffalo wild wings they should just stick to their cheese sandwiches or whatever they're eating <laughs> worst food in the world really dramatic uh, have you been have you been to p- countries where they actually have to eat bugs for survival you know I, okay so i was actually thinking about having the, they have these protein bars and protein powders that are made out of ground up crickets i saw those ah uh, i mean i don't know i'd give it a try you know what i did one time every time someone mentions crickets i have a friend who is i say he's an aspiring stand-up comic and it drives him nuts <laughs> because he is and he wishes he were more than that and oh. for his birthday i sent him a card <laughs> And I bought crickets and I put crickets in the car. <laughs> oh, my li- live crickets? <laughs> no, like little salt and vinegar ones. Like, <laughs> I was That's... like, this is all you're going to hear through your stand up career. Oh, shit. Nice. <laughs> I told you I'm all about giving that tough love. Oh, wait. So we have to improve this restaurant. Yeah. I mean, I think. what would you do? What's your gut telling you? I, I feel like. Um, don't use crickets. I feel like what else did she say? She said worst food in the world. Maybe don't do wings anymore. Yeah, I mean, well, it is Buffalo Wild Wings. <laughs> Change the whole name. Just rebrand Buffalo. Yeah, we need you to rebrand Buffalo Wild Burgers. Just make. Burgers. But you know, I've been to Buffalo Wild Wings many times because sometimes after gigs, it's the only place that's open, and I have never had an issue. I've never. I always judge it by the shark 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 situation. I've never had a shark situation. So <laughs> not even know, once. Not even once. Oh man. I bet you this is a girl who worked there and got fired and she's mad. She's oh. mad because she had a crush on the night manager and he just didn't want to get with her. So she thought she could play it cute and try and like act up and then she got fired and now she's mad. Oh she you're... probably like stuck a tit in the in the hot sauce something trying to turn him on and she thought it was going to work and it backfired he got her fired it got her fired oh that's and and rightly so because i feel like a tit in the hot sauce that would sting the areola wouldn't yeah, maybe it? it would sting especially if you had like breastfeed after that poor baby oh no oh man yeah he'd be in for a trip i have a, I have a sick sense of humor you're 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 fitting right in here this is have great. you ever eaten a cockroach yes no no not a cockroach a cricket i've eaten a cricket 
But so, I mean, who is this person that they know what cockroaches taste like? That, that That's just my main concern out of this whole thing. That's what I feel. Have you ever eaten a cockroach? They're not bad if they're dry. If they're juicy, I feel like I would have issues Ew. with it. Oh, God. If they're nice and succulent, like a medium Dude, if rare. if you were hungry, you'd have to eat a cockroach, you know? You'd have to eat one. That's like, yeah, I don't know if I could. You remember Fear Factor? I don't know if I could do that. I don't know either. It's well, I have, but I don't know if I get no a cockroach. No, if it's a big one, a that's... cockroach is meater than a cricket. I feel like a cricket one crunch and it's not that bad. You're, you're There's right. Not much to them. Yeah, you're right. It, and it was all dust sawdusty. And so it just went down with the yeah, glass it's of not water. Like cockroach. I mean, something that can survive nuclear war is not meant to be eaten and i feel like it would take multiple chomps to kill it oh god oh god oh god so you're getting it and it's like oh no i have a family (laughs) no no stop (laughs) and then it takes a couple and then you're done sorry did i gross you out i didn't mean that i'm so grossed out (laughs) Uh, the the microphone didn't cut out i just had my mouth agape and nothing no (laughs) noise is coming out so here's an idea what about a buffalo wild crickets where or wild cockroaches so you, yeah, it should be. They should do buffalo wild cockroaches. And since this girl, or I'm assuming it's a girl, is it a mm-hmm. girl? I think her name is Nikki Nikila. We always complain. I just assumed it was a girl. Um, <laughs> since she seems to be the culinary, the foremost culinary expert on ground up cockroaches, she could get hired back to Buffalo Wild Cockroaches as the chef. Oh, there you go. And then she could make. So uh, Buffalo Wild Wings, you need to rebrand to Buffalo Wild Cockroaches. Hire Nicola. Nicola. <laughs> Have her make her famous hot tit sauce. Mmm. Mmm. Although we need this a dairy. sauce tastes like titties. We need a dairy-free option. But I, I love it. The, the... There's your new sound bite. Perfect. Uh, what, could you say it one more time? This sauce tastes like titties. <laughs> Beautiful. So I think that's good. I think we solved it for Nick, Nick, Nicola. Yeah, Nikki. Yeah. We have one more from Ryan S. He's got a one-star review, and it's like a hit from a buffalo, as it says. If you're looking for a place of slow service, cold food, and massive TVs, then this is the place for you. The regular seating room. <laughs> <laughs> I love how it was like bad, bad, great. Yeah. So- Slow service, cold food, and massive TVs. Yeah. Uh, the, the regular seating room was full, but the bar area was open. All the tables were not cleaned, and no one bothered bussing them. It also took more than 45 minutes to get our food, and we only ordered wings. I personally will not be going back to BWW anytime soon, unless it's to hang out with a friend, and it's their favorite place. The food itself is below average. It was overcooked, dry, and lukewarm. The only nice thing about this place is that it has nice TVs. Definitely would not go back here to eat. So it Sounds like he likes TV. It sounds like he's kind of torn. He was really attracted to the TVs. You right? know, there was this place in my hometown of Syracuse, right off the highway, when you got into the city. And it yeah. was a dive bar restaurant. And in the windows, they had neon signs. And it said, warm beer, lousy food, hot wings. And that was their that was their thing, and people and it was like a well known restaurant. People would go there like truck. It was like a truck stop, and truckers used to love it. So that's, I just kind of like this guy's. It's almost like the same thing. Yeah, that's a, so. You're saying Buffalo Wild Wings should put up a sign that says "slow service, cold food, massive TVs." Absolutely. <laughs> you know, if you've got a flaw, you've got to flaunt it. That's, because then no one can hold it against you. So if you put that out there. The people who come in can't complain about it. You just direct them right back outside and say, see, we said slow service. That's we, tr- uh-huh. We said lukewarm food, which made me gag a little because that's where all the amoebas are. But- Ooh, when your food, when the temperature is not cold the way it should be or hot the way it should be, that's where it makes you rumble, rumble in your tumble. Oh, no. And that's when that's sh- what makes you have soupy poops. I was going to say the shartsicles. That's when they come out. See, that's that's the type of place when you eat afterwards you can't trust any of your farts oh the pop charts that's when they come out oh god get me home oh god it is oh a good god, i'm giving birth <laughs> I, lo- I love this voice this is a good voice <laughs> 
Where did the inspiration come for this? Buffalo Wild Wings? <laughs> Buffalo Wild Asshole. <laughs> So, I mean, this is also true with comedy, right? Don't you just, whatever people are seeing about you, you just say it up front so then they don't talk. Like, if I'm going up there, I'm like, I kind of look like Lance Bass, so then they're not talking about it behind my back or after. Do you talk about that? All the time. That is so No, no, I'm kidding. (laughs) You don't? No. no. Oh, God, you're so sarcastic. Should I? Should I talk about it? I mean, it's like Brad Williams. He goes on stage and he is the elephant in the room. If you have an elephant in the room situation, you've got to own it. But is that is it that big that I just look like Lance Bass so much you that do. I have to say it? I honestly thought for a second that you were Lance Bass. If I hadn't smoked this DMV weed, I I honestly probably wouldn't have thought it. But for two seconds, I was like, oh, I'm doing a podcast with Lance Bass today. I didn't want to tell you, but I am Lance Bass. I, I knew it. I've disguised myself it. as Stefan Satani, but I am Lance Bass. I love that your name is Steven, but you're sticking with Stefan. So I gagaed myself in sixth grade where I made my own name because my I love that my your, born, your parents were chill with it. My whole family calls me Stefan now. That's amazing. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I don't know. It was on a whim, too. I was so spontaneous. It was in sixth grade. I was in line for going back to homeroom. And I was like, guys, call me Stefan. And they were like, OK. And then I told and my they whole, just started calling you Stefan. They did. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. I'm going to have people call me Jessica. It has a nice ring to it. Jessica. It does, but it also sounds like a virus. Oh, yes, very much so. Transmitted by mosquitoes. Yeah, transmitted by all the open mouth coffers at the DMV today. Oh, or amoeba, amoebas at Buffalo Wild Wings. Yeah, amoebas. Lukewarm amoebas at the Buffalo Wild Crickets. That sounds like such a selfish bacteria, too, doesn't it? Like amoebas. It is. It's all and about it's so- amoeba. <laughs> I am an amoeba. <laughs> I need my Starbucks order perfect or else I'm going to send it back. Can I have an amoeba latte? <laughs> extra foam. Extra. Can you put extra lukewarm foam on my amoeba latte? <laughs> Can you dry up some crickets and just sprinkle them on the top? Do you guys have pumpkin spice crickets yet? I swear to God, in f- probably 20 years, we're going to have that. We're going to have that. We're going to have to have that because all of our land's going to be so goddamn dried up. The only thing we're going to have left to eat is bugs. That's seriously. And you know what? Bugs release less methane than cows. So that means that the the global warming is going to be better. It's yes. going to be global lukewarming. Oh, no, because that means amoebas. Fuck. The amoebas are going to come in. The amoebas and... are always there. Oh, my God. This... Global Luke Warming. Oh, Hi. no. <laughs> They're playing at Coachella next year. <laughs> hey, guys, for Global Luke Warming. Oh, my. Is it like Coldplay How type music? How you doing, everybody? <laughs> They're British. Hey, clo- hey, how's everybody doing here, Buffalo Wild Cockroaches? I was a cock of an older brother, but I got locked out. I got a nice shag, and I had some mushrooms, and now I started. <laughs> and I saw the other side. And the other side, he's fucking crickets. <laughs> this song's called Six Legs, based on my inspiration from crickets and greenhouse gases. <laughs> oh, beautiful. <laughs> All right, so I think we helped Buffalo Wild Wings a great deal. I mean, if not, we better get some sponsorship money from it. I think so. That, that was good. All right, yeah. so we're going to move on to the last question. Oh, this, no! I know. It, it's coming to an end. We're going to write it out nicely, but it's the last question. And this is, the question says, would this be the right way to air out jeans? Hello. I was told to air out jeans since there is no need to wash them after everywhere. I went with the method by hanging my unfolded jeans over the rod be- below my wardrobe, as my wardrobe is a door-free design. I would like to ask if I did the right way, and would this provide the air-out effect? Sincerely, proper hygiene. And I spelled that H-I dash J-E-A-N. Oh, shit. Cause of, they want to air out their jeans? Have you done? I- I've never done that before. Have you- They don't dry their jeans? No, so this guy's saying, I don't have to wash my jeans every day, so I'm going to hang them up to air out the stank. 
No, he needs to wash out the stank. He's got that from under nut sweat and he's not washing it out. That's kind of what I feel, right? If you've got a stank, there's no airing out of your jeans, right? No, and like, also, back to the previous conversation of amoebas, you're bringing all those, you think amoebas don't latch onto some denim during the day? Oh my god, those damn denim amoebas. Those denim amoeba- amoebas love riding. I mean, they take that denim train all the way to your house. My favorite part of this podcast is the amount of times we're saying amoebas. I, amoebas is one of my favorite words. I say it all the time. It's fr- from that little girl from Signs. It was Ab- Abigail. Who who was that little girl? That little actress. The little girl. She was oh. drinking in water, and she's like, I, "This one, there's too many amoebas in it." Oh my god! I used to love that movie. T- that was a good, that was like one of M. Night Shyamalan's only good movies. Yeah, it was pretty good. Wait, so we have to help this person air out their fucking gross denim. A, <laughs> is he a grown man? B, wash your jeans. C, you're obviously still living at home if you don't know how to wash your fucking denim. So I think this person just needs to walk into the ocean with cement shoes. Or walk into the ocean with their jeans because the salt will boom clean it, right? Bung. Bung. It's walk into the ocean with your jeans. Maybe those little like Japanese fishies will come and eat all the stuff off of it. Oh yeah, that's like those those um jean fishies. Yeah, those like little teeny like little feeder fish that clean off people's feet. <laughs> Bitches who go on vacation, they go to like third world countries and they stick their feet in those in those water basins and all those little fish eat the skin off their feet while they're getting a pedicure because they oh, want to experience another culture. That's how I I did that. I, I'm a white guy and I did that. Did you do that? I did do that. I was like, Definitely. oh my gosh, I feel Turkish. I'm, I'm did so, you really do that? I did do that. What country was it? It was the Virgin Islands. So it was technically... Oh my a, God, you're so white. It's I, adorable. I know. I had my Starbucks latte and some conch fritters. I didn't know you That yours. is adorable. Look, this is why... You white bitches go missing on vacation. <laughs> Some guys in the corner of an alley is like, come here. Hey, come here. I got Starbucks hey, you for you. you want to have a koi pond pedicure? I... You're like, yes. <laughs> yes. Do you want a pumpkin spice latte pedicure? Yes. Do you guys have Never a place? Never be seen again. <laughs> Done. Stefan was gone. White Ste- bitches go missing. We're an ex- endangered species on vacation. We're like gazelles out there. Yeah, I, I like how I'm classifying myself as a white bitch. I am. I am basically a white bitch. <laughs> but you're you're co-signing. Oh man, I'm like oh my god, crickets, gross. I'll do the <laughs> fish thing, but no, no crickets. <laughs> it's like you get your hair braided in Jamaica. <laughs> how did you know? Yeah, I can tell. I can tell. Oh, I know what's up. <laughs> <laughs> this so- dude needs to wash his fucking jeans. Look, I I don't wash my denims every day, like every other day. Mm-hmm. But at least toss them in the dryer. Wait, really? Will yeah. that air them out nicely? Yeah, that that does a nice little fluff. Okay. I mean, traditionally, if we're if we're being literal, you don't really need to wash your denim every day, but you need a little heat or some sort of atmosphere on it. If it's not gonna be water, it better be some heat. Do you know why? Because of those goddamn amoebas. Amoebas. <laughs> Those fucking amoebas. They're Coming so to annoying. Coachella next <laughs> season. Amoebas. <laughs> amoebas with headliners. L- lukewarm. Global lukewarming. <laughs> lukewarm. Global warming. <laughs> global lukewarming. <laughs> global lukewarming. That sounds like a famous actor's name. I'm global lukewarming. Okay. <laughs> so. So dry your fucking do something with your don't air dry them. At least them. do something with your denim. You know they make this really nice Febreze spray. At least fucking Febreze them and toss them in the wash in the dryer. That's what I would do too. With the dryer sheet, you yeah, know. That's good. Hey, can you maybe put a Lysol wipe and just wipe your jeans like that? Yeah. Can you just? How about you just wash them? Because we all know that your stank taint got a little wet and hot that day. How yeah? How many farts do you think they drilled into those jeans? Yeah, and they're you like farted in your denim. You're gonna tell me you had a whole day you didn't fart in your denim, and then and you're, you're just gonna, gonna air it out. Those farticles. Mm, no, no. I don't even like to fart into my mattress because I don't know how long my mattress is gonna hang on to those farticles. I'll fart out. Really? Yeah, I'll turn on my side and fart out into the air, not into the mattress. That's S- rude. Sometimes, well, because my wife makes me, I have to get out of the bed and fart 
outside of the bed. That's a good wife. And then get back in. That's a good wife. You shouldn't fart where you fornicate. I'm like a marital science. I'm a trained animal now. So when I do it, I, I just get up. Sometimes even in my sleep, I just get up, fart, and then go back to bed. Art is fattening. Well, fart is disgusting. Yes. Especially in the sheets. Because there that... should be no shit in the sheets. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Marital science. Just basic hygiene. Even if you're just. You want me to blow job where you just laid a cookie? Get oh, out of here. No, thank you. Yeah, no, thank you. That's... Gross. That's that's. You want sick. me to blow you where your ass and me bazaar? Maybe also coming to Coachella. But next some year. <laughs> Sometimes when I fart in the bed accidentally, I get some of those fish that eat your skin, and then they eat at the fart particles. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. And then I just sweep them away. They're done. No. <laughs> no. They're done. Absolutely not. I'm like great. Absolutely not. <laughs> That would be so bad for those fish. I feel like they'd just be vomiting as they eat. They're like, what is this? No, no, this is not dessert. Do fish fart? Yes. I say that very confidently, but I have no idea. I just imagine, I just, that would mean they'd have like little buttholes, and I just don't think they have buttholes. But they eat. No, they poop. I've seen their their little poop strands. Oh, yeah, they have poops. They must fart. They must let out a little fish fart, just like a little... A uh, little bubble, like brrr. yeah, one teeny bubble goes up to the to the <laughs> the surface of the water. Okay, so we should be very thankful that we're not fish because we can kind of sneakily, surreptitiously fart and no one notices. But a fish, the bubble appears, right? So and no one knows where it came from. Could come from a you know a stalk of algae. Oh, or a group of amoebas. Oh, amoebas! Those naughty, naughty amoebas. Stink- the little whores. Stinky. The whores of the ocean. Those stinky boogers. Fucking The amoeba. whores of the ocean. <laughs> Which is also coming to Coachella next year. I kind of like that one. I like them all, actually. I do, too. Whores of the ocean, global lukewarming, and amoebas. We've got a great band lined up. This is going to be a sweet Coachella. Hell yeah, it is. It's just going to be you and me and your wife. Make sure to air out your jeans, because this is going to be... A that should be our one. slogan. Air out your jeans because you are not ready for this year's Fartchella. <laughs> Fartchella. <laughs> oh, I'm so sad that my ho- my co-host couldn't make it because this is this is harmony right here. This is, 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 is this his realm farts because I love farts. This is basically what our podcast is about. Oh, good. The essence good. of it. I have a whole episode of farts on my podcast. I heard it. It is a, a delight. That's why I was, it was like, a lot of fun. That's, that's why I learned how to go. How do you? I can't do it. I can do. Tell two... me, tell me a food item, and I'll I'll do the fart noise that associates with it. Mmm, gouda cheese. <laughs> Soft tacos from Taco Bell. <laughs> That's accurate. <laughs> I like the finishing touch. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> um, sardines. <laughs> Did it happen? Exactly. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's so tight in there, you can't you couldn't get out. Uh, um, one more. I want to do one more. Okay. Okay. Wait, do you want a fancy food or a regular food? Whatever you're feeling. I'm feeling fancy. So I'm fine gonna, dining. Let's I'm, go fine dining. I'm going to say swordfish. <laughs> I am amazed by how quickly you can recognize the correlation. <laughs> Oh god, my dog just farted. Oh, god. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Ugh. Carlin, that's so bad. I see seriously. <laughs> <laughs> so I will say that's the wonderful thing about my cats is I don't think they've ever farted. Uh Pipple farts are unique. His they're he, he's just looking at me because he knows he just came over here, farted, and walked away. Did I hear farts? He just came over and it was just like, Pah. what a sneaky, sneaky fuck. 
Sneaky farts coming to Fartchella 2020. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> um, I think I think we've done it. I think oh, we've we've done it. I think we've advised ourselves and we've self helped everybody here. So if, if people didn't get help from this episode, they're helpless. They're they're helpless. They should go join the amoebas and just fucking <laughs> go under seriously. You're, if you didn't get help from all of this, really, really highly educated, severely, severely <laughs> brought on by some extensive life experience advice, then good fucking laugh. You're, you're not going to survive life. We Yes, two gurus. Gurus kind of sounds like really sticky baby kangaroos. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> ruminating on that anyway <laughs> before we leave i want to do some plugs and closing remarks if you guys have not subscribed yet please subscribe we're on apple Podcasts, spotify all the podcast directories and all that so just subscribe just do it leave a review follow us on twitter instagram if you have a question email us at hyperbolepodcast at gmail.com this is all going to be in the show notes and also in the show notes are Jesse, where can you be found? Jess, I'm oh, fucking eight. Oh, Jesse May. I'm sorry. You can call me Jesse. I like to Jesse's be called Stephan. And I'm like, you guys can find me in your closets tonight. Oh, seeing if you're listening to me about my fart mattress advice. Uh, JesseMay.com. <laughs> I'm Jesse May Peluso on all social media. My podcast is called Sharp Tongue. And come see me live. I'm a fun time. I, and a portion of ticket sales will go towards the Alzheimer's Association in perpetuity. So That's amazing. I was just going to ask, do you think somebody has been a stalker and snuck into somebody's closet waiting for them and then they were given away because they had to fart? Yeah, yeah. I'm sure that's happened at least once. I, at least once. It's going to happen tonight, tell you that much. Oh. It's, hopefully it's not Lock too your doors. <laughs> and air out your jeans. <laughs> the amoebas are coming <laughs> oh my god well thank you so much Jesse May and uh, thank you everybody for listening we will talk at you soon thank you bye bye bye